Now, on first uh, looking at this, it may seem, seem to be quite a simple structure. Five bricks in a line. Made up with a pattern. And there are the five components. But we will find out later that this is more than meets the eye. It is fiendishly complicated and serves quite a number of purposes. And the first set of purposes we're going to show with the bricks in the pattern form. Later we're going to unpattern them and see how they behave in that state. Right, here we are back with our pattern of five bricks. Single brick in a pattern of five and of course if we select the pattern and the move tool we are going to select the whole five no doubt which means that we can drag it wholesale that was in forwards forward and back open oops start again up and down and we can turn the whole thing around in any direction and the three axes that all makes sense now we'll go backwards to where we were that's it so that is as we would expect now suppose we right click on here and expand all and expose all the bits and pieces of our pattern So we can select a component with the move tool. So what might happen in this situation? Well, if we move the green axis, see that? This end block remains fixed. And the others move about it back to where we were however if we select that one and the green axis again the whole string of them moves together similarly with that one same again and that one again by the way these also move that way and and that way and like that and like that control Z back to where we were however with the last one the end this end one there we go we do that and upwards that happens and that one that happens scrunches them up back to the start I've just realized I haven't shown what happens when we try to rotate a one in the component method we've got the first one selected suppose we try and rotate it it rotates it about the one we selected and, and it, it's rotating the whole string of them and again here and again that way control Z Z Z there we are and if we select this one and try and rotate it that's again it's rotating about the axis of them and there again rotating about the one we've selected and similarly with the other axis control Z Z, Z back to where we were 
Whereas if we select the solid part and then try and rotate the blue axis, they rotate individually. Control Z. Second solid, same thing. And it doesn't seem to matter what brick we try to rotate, they all end up doing the same thing with the rest of the bricks. Okay, there's one thing I haven't uh, demonstrated in the pattern mode is that if you select a solid, I think it happens with every any solid. We'll take the middle one. That one isn't expanded. The middle one. Not exactly the middle one, but who cares? And press the delete key they are all deleted. Control Z. Whereas, if you select the component, press the delete key, only that one is deleted. Which is worth knowing if you want to make a brick wall and put a window in. You're going to delete individual bricks in the pattern mode. by selecting the component rather than the solid. Control Z, we'll get the brick back. Right, that just about covers the behaviour while we've got a pattern going here. So we're going to look at what the behaviour might be when we unpattern these five bricks. So right click on pattern and choose unpattern. It's now changed to a component number two, the others being component one. Right click on single brick up here and expand all. As before, if we select component with the move button selected, we can move the whole group on block in any direction. and rotate it similarly. Control Z, go back. That's it. Whereas if now we choose a single component, this end one, for example, we see that it is totally independent of the others. And we can twirl it around quite happily on its own, even delete it. Control Z. And it's the same for any component. Now there's something worth noticing that when you select, say the one at the left hand side from the list, delete it, then restore it, it actually goes to the end of the list. So the, the first shall become last, as it were. So that may be worth knowing. So this one, which was first in the list, is now the last one in the list. The first one in the list is now the second one in the list. I suppose if you want to maintain the order of these, you should shift this back to click it and drag it to there and now you've got that first one back in the very left hand side so that might be worth uh, knowing about and finally for this uh, little demo we choose a solid and we notice that if we try and delete this 
all of them are deleted and we are left with five empty components nothing in them no, no twirly diamonds to indicate there's anything in them so we'll control Z out of that and see how they behave when we try to move them so we've got the move tool we've selected one solid drag the green and all, they all move so they're all still stuck together and if we rotate one they all rotate similarly individually now there may of course be a use for that if we can think of it so it might be a good idea to retain all these different functionalities in your head as they may come in useful sometime for some sort of bizarre use or reasonable use Control Z back to where we were and finally finally you must bear in mind that selecting uh, a pattern member with a different method can have different results in the way it behaves so rather than select an item in the structure tree here if we select it using the box select like so we see that the solid has been selected rather than the component which means that if we try and manipulate it with the move tool we move the whole group Control Z whereas if we select it in the structure tree and select the component we can move the individual brick it is of course not possible to select the component with the box select I would guess let's try and select two of them well there you go we've selected two solids not two components so this can be useful in certain cir circumstances where you want to perhaps move the whole uh, the whole pattern or group but if one brick needs to be moved then you must select the component like so so that's a lot to think about and I hope you guys can get your heads around it all I know I'm struggling a little bit to remember it all so I hope you find it useful and can implement it successfully in your models thanks for watching bye for now bye